All right, next up, we're going to be talking about helper methods, accessors. All right, so after you complete and test your program, you're feeling confident that everything's correct. Um, you might end up finding that there are little blocks of code in your solution that are repetitious. So when similar codes of frag or <laughs> similar fragments of code appear in your program, we um, say that the code smells. I guess it's a kind of weird way to say it, but yeah. We eliminate these repetitions by factoring out recurring code fragments into a new method. You see it repeated over and over again, wrap it up into a method or a function, and we call this a helper method. You can replace every occurrence of the recurring code fragment by a call to this helper method with appropriate argument values, okay? So input parameters. That is, we reuse the body implementation rather than repeating it over and over um, so that we can call it, but that, that little block has been tested out properly and there aren't little differences between each repetition, etc. okay? So it's a really good thing to do. This process is called refactoring and it helps you modify your code structure without compromising correctness, which is really important for engineering. Okay, so here's an example. So we got a class called person collector and inside of it, we have an object called PS, um, which is an array of type uh, person, all right? And then we have attributes like uh, max equal 100 and, and number of persons and OP as an integer. And we've got, um, let's see, this would be a, uh, a constructor and that constructor sets up your uh, array PS right here based on the maximum number right here of, um, of an array of type person. All right, and then we add persons. So we have a uh, number of persons, we have an array, we have a uh, number of persons plus plus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now we have other tasks that we want to add on to here. We want an accessor for does the person exist? We want mutators as well. So the change weight of and change height of the, the person, okay? So let's set that up. So we got uh, class person collector. We want to set these things up. So we want uh, something called person exists. This is a method. We have an input string called n, and we've got this uh, for loop inside of here, etc., etc. And then we return a value found. Next, so that was person exists. That's a method. Next, we have change weight of, which uh, takes two input arguments, string uh, a string and a double precision floating point number, and we have another for loop right there. So we had a for loop there. We got another for loop there, and inside. Um, and then we have another method, change height of, and there's another for loop there. So there's a for loop there, there's a for loop there, there's a for loop there. There's some similarities that we're seeing right here. All right, we're seeing these repetitions. So we're seeing that for this method, that method, and that method, so an accessor, a, uh, a mutator, and another mutator right there, there's this input argument that's a string each single time, there is um, this uh, array right here that's used. There's a for loop and there's an if. So for an if, for an if, for an if. All the same structure, okay? It's over and over again. So what we want to do is we want to eliminate this repetition. So what we'd like to do is have a, a, a new method called index of, which basically does that, what we saw earlier right here, this repeating bit of code basically has to do with the indices. All right, so we want index of, and we were gonna get the index of based on the string that we're being, we're passing in. Okay, so this is gonna help us out. It's a helper method. And, um, and so you can see a lot of the same sort of fragments that you saw before, it's just all in here, okay? All sort of compartmentalized into this little block right here that we just call over and over again, all right? So that when we wanna do person exists, instead of all that code that we had before, we replace it with index of. For change weight, of we have index of right here so that's the string that we're inputting inside that's the call and again index of right there we have refactored okay we have uh, simplified things we also have one place to verify that this is correct we make sure this is correct and then we reuse it there and there and there that's efficient next up Let's take a look at another example. So we have a point class with X and Y coordinate values. We have an accessor that's got, uh, uh, it's a, a get distance from origin as a method, okay? And, and we use it like this, all right? And we return the distance between uh, some point P 
and uh, the origin, 0 and 0. So x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. Next we have an accessor, get distances to, okay, point 0.1 and point 0.2. And then we get try distance or three distances um, with respect to point 0.1 and point 0.2. Okay, so get distances in this case will return the sum of distances between P and P1, P and P2, and between P1 and P2, like that. Well, there seems to be a lot of similarity just sort of superficially between all of those. So let's take a look at this. We get get, get distance from origin. Okay, that's a method right there. And we're going to return math square root, math power. You know, this is this is the equation right in here. Okay. Next, guess get distances. Two. So that was get distance from origin. Now we're going to do get distances to. Basically, we're going to have the same code block there and there. Then three distances or try distances, that method right there. There, there, and there. There's a lot of similarity going on here. So the code pattern, math square root, math power, etc., etc., math power, like this equation is being used over and over clearly because we're, you know, it's, it's geometric identities, right? So we're writing down uh, this every single time we're using it. What we should do is create a helper method that with the right parameters and return types, we'll do the same thing. So for instance, whoops, that should have been uh, there, like that. So get distance from double, double, uh, other x, another y, and then there's your equation right there, all right? Here's what we should do. So we get get distance from other x, other y. Oops, that should be th right there. We return this. Get distance from origin. We call get distance from, like that. Okay, that simplifies what this looks like. Now you do it once, not a big deal, but you do it a second time, and so this method is also simplified. So we got this simplified method, that simplified method, and then check this out, simple as well. One, two, three. We've simplified it there too. So it really makes things easier to understand, to read, etc. When we need to look at an equation, we take a look at this, we see that it's being called, go into here, we take a look at it, and then we can see that, oh, it's being used there, it's being used there, it's being used there, there, and there. It simplifies things for us, okay? So there you go, how to refactor, how to remove repetitions from your code. Mm -hmm.